Yeah, so we um, we watched Kenny from Gridlines build a project finance model using a new tool, Openbox, that they're developing in, in less than 20 minutes, which was which is amazing. Um, and, and the challenge you're now stepping up to is to build a three-way, a dynamic three-way model with, with links to actuals from zero in, in 10 minutes or less than 10 minutes. So, uh, so yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah. Thanks, Joel. So you might want to stop uh, the screen share and give it back to me so I can um, sort of uh, okay. do that. Um, so I'm going to um, share that now. Um, alrighty, so let's just grab, uh, grab my timekeeper, um, which I guess you're going to watch me as well. Um, this is a, a blank oh, workbook. There's no uh, hidden sheets. There's nothing um, hiding behind. I'm not just suddenly going to reveal it. Um, uh, and let's start the clock. So um, what we're gonna do along here, just like Giles had his ribbon of data deer, which I've got here as well. Uh, we're gonna go to Medano. Uh, we're gonna go financial model wizard. Um, no pun intended in terms of wizardry, but it is quite quite incredible um, what we're gonna do. So we're gonna build a, a model um, connected to zero um, using um, a set of chart of accounts. This, there's a number of different chart of account structures. Um, we can also, we are going to build this the zero client is in australia so we're going to build the zero but of course we could do for new zealand uk and us the, you know different tax treatments and different uh, tax rates and even names like gst versus vat in the U, in the uk um you know would be would be changed so uh, in doing this we're going to um, select different modules um that's going to be uh, pre prescribed to the chart of accounts um and then what we're going to do is we're going to actually going to connect that to zero uh, update it. Um, there's four periods of, of history that's showing here. It's a 36 month model. So it's three years um, and it's rolling monthly and actual. Uh, we're going to use dollars, um, but of course we could change to um, thousands, millions or billions. And if we want to change the denom denomination, we can. Uh, we can stick with dollars. Um, we're going to choose next because um, really the, the key thing is really in the build phase and, and connecting that to, to zero. So uh, the key thing around why um, these sort of modular development technologies are useful is because it does help us automate the process so we can have better conversations and get to the heart of the value of modeling. Um, so what we're going to do, sometimes we, we, we build uh, and connect, we build first and connect later, but um, I'm under a bit of time pressure. Let's just have a quick time check. That's a, almost two minutes. Um, but we're going to, um, which is still nothing. Um, but we're going to connect to zero. We could connect to uh, QBO as well through an, what's called an API, which is an application programming interface um, or Excel CSV. So really we could connect to any accounting system. We just happen to be using uh, the zero API, but you could connect to Hyperion, uh, Great Plains, Co you know, any, any of the big names out there. You can, you get an Excel or CSV dump, which apparently lots of people are doing now. They're dumping out of these big expensive systems back into Excel because they can't do scenario analysis and, and simulation. So we're going to build this now. We're going to connect to zero. I'm going to click next. Um, it's going to pop up a screen for me to log in to zero. I've got to make sure that I log into the right client. So um, uh, you can still see my screen, Giles? Yeah, so it's, it's showing the uh, connection, the Madonna connection at the moment. So yeah, we'll just uh, connect that to zero. Um, so I'll quickly log in here into zero, click login. Um, and really what's happening is it's allowing me, um, I'm gonna collect, make sure I'm not doing a client model. So that's the demo company Australia. That's gonna allow access to that model. It's gonna take me back to Medano. Um, it's now connected. Um, so I'm gonna go back to my Excel workbook um, and the authentication is done. Um, and now it's waiting authorization um, and really it's going to collect the four periods. So income statement periods one, two, three, and four have been collected. Balance sheet one, two, three, and four. And there we go. So right now this is all balanced and connected. I'm going to, I'm going to actually break this link. Um, so what we can see is that all of the orange bits are connected to the model through the chart of accounts. Um, but the sales is not connected. It's not orange. Um, and also we can see here at the bottom, there's a difference. We can also flick through the different periods here. So if I want to look at different uh, months, I can flick back and forth. If I remember particular months, I can see the profit. Just to uh, cross check and send check, I know that that's gonna be wrong because I know I didn't make losses for all the periods. So I'm gonna take the sales, I'm gonna drag it 
and put it back into total revenue. So that's now balanced. You can see that balancing um, and that's balanced for all periods. So if there's a new chart of account, it'll automatically pick that up. So that's the income statement. I'm gonna click next. Here's the balance sheet, same thing. I can flick to the different periods. The balance sheet's balanced. And uh, let's do a quick time check. We're at uh, four minutes, 25. Uh, then we're gonna click next. There's a dashboard that's gonna be pre-populated. Um, the financial statement summary. Uh, we're gonna click create. And this is where it all happens. This is the magic. So um, the error check, the check sheet, you had a control sheet as well, which had checks. Uh, obviously yeah. we, we have the same under the best practice standards. Um, we have uh, income statement, balance sheet, uh, cash flow. And then what actually gonna happen is the cash flow is gonna get uh, reverse engineered or back calculated really. You've got the income statement, you've got the balance sheet and, and it's gonna um, create the, the cash flow for you because we didn't pull down a cash flow from zero. We only pulled the income statement and balance sheet. And that's really all you need. Once you've got the balance sheet, effectively you've got cash, you've got your closing cash. And so you've got everything reconciled and it's gonna build up that uh, three-way model for you. Um, these are all modular blocks um, that they're connected to each other. The, the bigger blocks are the top of the module areas. And of course we in this workbook and what you're seeing in the background is the model being built. So we're at 72%. Let's just quickly grab our time. Um, so we're at five minutes 30 and we're, um, we're just about done. I think when we did it live, we were a little bit quicker. Giles, um, I think we probably, um, I didn't have some of those logins as I do now, but that's still pretty quick. It's, uh, <laughs> it's call it five and yeah. 46. So, you know, under, way under 10 minutes. Um, and, uh, and there we have it. So I'm gonna quickly look at the summary. Um, all the information's coming through. We have an error in this. So I'm gonna just change it because the model period is February. So let's just change that. That error goes away at the top. Um, all the dashboards are, are populated here. That's all flowing through. There's our cash guide. Um, I think we got a question on the, on the session around um, what if we wanna roll forward or how do we update it? So here this um, May is the last historical month. Uh, June is our first month of forecast. So let's go into um, our revenue and let's say, well, we don't wanna have forecasting on a, an amount basis. Let's go and replace the revenue to growth rate. Um, you know, we, we can do drivers and, and we'll see here in the Madonna library, there's, there's a range of different other um, modules we can pull in, uh, headcount, um, livestock, if we're doing uh, retail volume sales, but we're just gonna select growth rate. We're gonna replace the growth, the, the revenue amounts module, uh, which is the top one, which is just the basic one. And we're gonna change that for growth rate. Uh, so it's gonna pull the piece of Lego out called a module. It's gonna put it back in um, and, um, and not gonna break the model. So the model is completely modular. So modular spreadsheet development, um, in front of your eyes, let's just change that now to a 5% growth rate across uh, all the periods. If we go back to our, our summary, now we can see the, the full revenue being populated at the top, balance sheet and cash flow, dashboards to the right, we can see all of that coming through. Uh, top revenue, again, the forecast is shown um, and that's all there. If we wanted to really roll the model, so June is a forecast month, we now wanna pull in a new month of actuals. We literally go back, we click to our time series, we change May to June, click update, and away we go. So let's go back to our summary, and we've got nothing in, um, in, in the June month and in the forecast. So we, we, we've got the, the growth rate based on the last month, um, so let's go in and put uh, 10,000 into this cell here. And of course, that's going to uh, then flow through uh, to the growth rate. So the growth rate's based on the, on, on the previous uh, months, which is why the rest was, was gone. And now that's, that's it. The entire time series has been rolled forward. The entire model's been rolled forward in a matter of seconds. Um, the build, obviously, Amazing. in a matter of minutes. But of course, the time does take then to customize some of this and apply it if it's multi-business yeah. units or um, there are um, other aspects that does take the time um, to, to, to use it. And so, you know, building a model, as we can see here um, with all the different modular blocks. Um, and one of the things I like to show is why financial modeling is so difficult. Here's the module areas. Um, but if you look at each of the modules, you're doing this manually. This is why it's so easy to make mistakes in model building. This is why it's so easy 
to take so long, whereas now all of this is automated. All of these links are completely automated and um, fundamentally changes the way we build models. Um, so yeah, it's exciting times um, for the modeling industry. Um, I have an article going out on um, some of the technologies that are coming out and, and this is certainly an, an interesting one to watch. But um, 